Ezekiel 22, verse 17. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, the house of Israel is to me become dross. And that's the impurities found in metals. When we used to make our own weights as lobstermen and fishermen, we, we do it with the, uh, uh, aluminum and tin. We would call scraping off the scum. Everything that floated up was impurity. You don't want that. All they are brass. We're going to look at metals. And tin and iron and lead. In the midst of the furnace. So these metals are put into a furnace for the purpose of. You got to get rid of the dross. Get rid of the impurities. Get rid of the scum. God is going to put his people in the furnace of fire to remove the scum. That's the purpose of Jerusalem being destroyed and, and Judah being taken over by the Babylonians. Got to get rid of those sins. You know what Satan does? He takes three Hebrew men and throws them in the furnace for not sinning. And they have a sweet fellowship with the one that is the Son of God. For everything we see God do, we see the devil does. God has feast days for the Jews and the Gentiles have feast days. In the midst of the furnace that they are even the dross of silver. If you had a piece of silver and it had not been refined and it still has its impurities, it ain't has no value. You know, the Bible says that the street, the street singular of New Jerusalem is pure gold. Pure gold is clear, not yellow. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye are all become dross. Ye, ye have all become polluted. Behold, therefore, I will gather you into the midst of Jerusalem. As they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin. Look at lead and tin. The, the scholars would have you think that the, those people way back then, the old time, they didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know metal urge. They don't know things like we know. <laughs> Let's shut up. In the midst of the furnace. So that would almost tell us what that furnace in Babylon was for. Metals. Brick. To blow the fire upon it. To melt it. So will I gather you in my anger. Our God's a consuming fire. And in my fury. And I will leave you there and melt you. So this picture is the judgment of God. Nebuchadnezzar's furnace pictures the, the judgment of Satan. God wants you cure, God wants you uh, pure, God wants you clean, God doesn't want any dross in you, and Satan wants to say, hey, if you don't bow down, you're gonna burn. And it's funny, because it's had Shadrach, Meshach, and Ingo died, they were gone to glory eventually through the Lord Jesus Christ. If any Satan's men would have died in that fire, they would have woke up in hellfire. Yea, I will gather you and blow upon you the fire of my wrath and will... And ye shall, ye shall be melted in the midst thereof. As silver is melted. Silver is a, is a price redemption in the Bible. 30 pieces of silver. The Israelites were to pay silver for it to be redeemed. So shall ye be melted in the midst thereof. Ye shall know that I, the Lord, have poured out my fury upon you. 
How are you going to know? When Jerusalem and Judah are gone, you're in hell. You know, a lot of Christians, sorry to say, they're going to find out the Lord is the Lord and the Bible is the Bible when they walk away from the judgment seat of Christ, not being burned by the fire, but by having their loss by the fire. By scooping up the ashes and nothing to be found. Well, that's what my Bible said. That's what I said, that weird preacher boy to you. Oh, you want to trust your pastor more? You want to trust your traditions more? You want to be more? Okay. I sent him. He preached the truth. Okay. Now you know he was right, and you know your pastor's wrong. Too late. Too late. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land, Israel, that has not been cleansed, nor rained upon in the days of indignation. So God has stopped the rain. That's one of the, that's one of the plagues in, in the tribulation period. Thanks to Moses and Elijah. There's a conspiracy. Men gather together for her evil purpose. Of her prophets. In the midst thereof. Like a roaring lion raven the prey. You mean like Satan? They had devoured her souls. Your adversary is a, a, as a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. Huh. You didn't get the cross reference. Oh, that's right. You don't read the Old Testament. <clears throat> they had taken the treasure and the precious things. They have made her many widows. People have died. Husbands have died in the midst thereof. So the priests, like Satan, have killed and destroyed and taken money. There are preachers and pastors like that today. They kill and destroy the flock and they take the money. They don't go after that one precious sheep. They'll take the 99 rich ones. Don't tell me. I know. I've been in churches. Her priest. Uh-oh. We're going from prophet to priest. Have violated my law. They were the upholders and teachers of the law. This would be the Pharisees and Sadducees in Jesus' day. And have profaned my holy things. Ain't right. That's the that's the church today. We're called priests, and we profane the Bible by changing the Bible, rewriting the Bible, adding, subtracting from the Bible. The holy Bible, they made it unholy. They have put no difference between holy and profane. I'm going to say it again, Easter and, and Christmas. They think it's right and great. And pastors and teachers and, and, and are all involved in how great it's wonderful to be. And they can't even realize Christ Mass. Mass has nothing to do with a Christian but the Catholic Church. You're so stupid. You can't even break down a two-syllable word to find out what the syllables are. And you can find that, dic that, that definition in a dictionary. And many dictionaries will give you the date. Many, 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 many years after the Bible was written. Never mind the birth of Jesus. I had a person tell me the other day, well, we, I've always, we, Christians have always done it. And you, you know what I was told when I was growing up? If everybody jumped off the bridge, would you? Well, no. Well, if Christians do it, I guess I'll do it. Broad is a way that leads to destruction. 
and many. They don't show difference between unclean and the clean. They're supposed. Uh, does that go for the dietary for the Jews? Uh, I, I forget what the minor prophets talked about. They're actually eating pig's flesh. That prodigal son didn't put clean, be clean, clean and unclean. He is down with the with the swine. That's unclean. He's eating with the swine. That's unclean. I know he wasn't a priest, but still. The priest and the Christians today cannot uh, understand the clean from the unclean. And had hid their eyes from my Sabbath. That's Jewish. And I am profane among them. You read the book of Malachi? Oh yeah, you know, you bring your bring your money and treasures into the storehouse, and God will bless you. Besides that, have you read the book of Malachi about the priests and what they were doing and how? That's yeah, contemptible. Yeah, you do the same thing over and over and over. Things don't change. Nothing new under the sun. Her princes, oh, third class, are in the midst thereof are like wolves. Wolves are not good. Revin the prey, you mean like the roaring lion? To shed blood, murder. To destroy souls. I mean, they look like they're the works under Satan. Maybe devils? To get dishonest gain. Oh boy, that's America. They shed blood and, and then they overcharge you. And her prophets, we're back to the prophets again. They get a double shot. Have dogged them with untempered mortar. We've looked at that before. They're building a wall with improper materials. That's what Pharaoh did when when Israel was building the bricks and he got to the point. He got to say, well, you go get your own bricks. You go get your own mud. You get your own. And they were just grabbing anything they could get. And archaeology have found in the point of the time of the building in Egypt, they found there was a great foundation, strong. And they're not Bible believers. Well, then when we looked at the top of the wall, man, it was anything they could find. It was not the best quality. Open your Bibles to Exodus. So they seen vanity, emptiness, nothing. And divining lies unto them. That's your churches today. I've sat under men in, in, in pulpits and Sunday school teachers and pulpits that come out and just outright lie to you. And when I called the question and called, I'm the bad guy. Okay, goodbye. It'll be weighed out the judgment seat of Christ. I had one pastor sit in front of me. I said, hey, here's the scripture, here's the scripture, here's the scripture. And that guy didn't give me one piece of scripture at all. What the scholars say. I don't think you're going to find many of those scholars in heaven. People think, well, you know, he's a pastor, he's a preacher, he's got to be right. There are people who call themselves Christians and don't even know what a Christian is. There are people who say they're going to go to heaven. If you don't try them out, you don't weigh the spirit, and you don't you don't question them. You find they are not going to heaven. Saying, "Thus saith the Lord God," when the Lord has not spoken. <laughs> Thus say the Lord. The Lord revealed to me. The Lord would have us to do this. No, no, no nonsense and garbage. And God's up in heaven. I didn't say that. And we've seen that in Jeremiah, and we've seen that in Isaiah, we've seen it in Ezekiel. God said, you open your mouth, and, and I, I, didn't, oh, I didn't put nothing in there. Well, he quoted scripture. So did Satan quote scripture to Jesus. 
out of context. So did E quote scripture, adding subtracting. And you got to realize that, that, that there are people out there who quote scripture, and the Bible tells us, study to show thyself for food on the God, and work with thy knees not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. When somebody perverts, when somebody quotes a perverted Bible, I can almost instantly say, that's not King James. You can quote three quarters of King James Bible, and I know that one quarter where you quote from another Bible. You're not fooling me. Now, you may fool them. What? Between you and God. The people of the land have used oppression. That's America. Exercise robbery. That's America. And it vexed the poor and needy. That's America. Yeah, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. Yeah, that's America. I sought for a man among them. That they should make up the hedge, a wall of protection. And stand in the gap before me for the land. I, I reached out to a man that said, all right, God, you're wrong. There was a man like that, and his name was Moses. And there were plenty of times that God said, hey, I'm going to destroy them. Moses steps up, Lord, you know. All right, Moses, I repent. I'm sorry, but the guilty ones, they're, they're, they're going to get it. And I read that passage. I saw it for a man. Haven't we been re reading about Jeremiah? Haven't we been reading about Ezekiel? And they have been doing right. They have been faithfully to the word of God. They, they have been strong for God. And God said, you know what? Even Jeremiah, Ezekiel couldn't do it. That's how bad it's gotten. We read early even Job, Noah, and Daniel could only save themselves. Stand the gap for, for the land. Notice the land. Do you realize Jesus Christ came on this earth and he wept over Jerusalem knowing that in 70 AD the land would be destroyed by Titus? We're not talking about souls. We're talking about the land. Why are there so many tornadoes? Why are there so many earthquakes and forest fires and blizzards and all kinds? Because the earth is under the curse of man. And the more man you put on the earth, the more the curse it gets and the worse it gets. Can you realize worldwide, and people think, well, he's talking about America. No, can you imagine the sins worldwide going on just today? How many wives have committed adultery against their husbands? How many females have been violated by rape? How many females in the Muslim community, though they want to, they don't want to marry that man, they have now under the the, the law they announced that they, they a woman cannot deny the marriage to a man. How many women have been oppressed by the Mormon church where she's wife number six or seven for one man? How many people have been robbed today by gunpoint or by taxes or by the government? Or by something they, 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 they put their money into and they're relying on them to give them a good quality material and it's not. I read the other day that in Russia, there was a period of time for, for antibiotic or penicillin that, you know, with no government control or no, no testing or not, that actually the vials would be filled with uh, uh, sterling water and not medicine. So the, so the companies could make more money. And the only way you would find out is if a patient would get that, thinking it's an antibiotic or penicillin, and they die because it wasn't the medication. 
Frank, that happens in America too. And and the American government gets so oh, we'll have a recall. No, 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 no. How about you have a takeover, get everything in the piece of junk your back, and get the person a, a better product? The earth is under the curse. The only way you're going to get this earth resolved and get this earth back to where it was when Jesus Christ comes back and removes that curse. Except for the serpent. And many of you don't read the Old Testament, don't you know what I just said? Now, I should not destroy it, but I found none. So there are people, we're number one, we're the greatest, God bless America, blah, blah. and God says, I can't even find one person amongst you. And don't you think you call that guy that, you know, in Daytona Beach, he preaches, that, that guy ain't even good enough. I'm not. And you're not. And there are Christians that we got the world's greatest preacher, we got the greatest free. Really? You got the greatest church, you got the greatest pastor. All right, let's take a, a 10 mile drive around your church and let's see how many package stores you have. Let's see how many bars you have. Let's see how many people who are involved in prostitution and drugs around your church. Well, you know, this kind of, we, we feed them, but we have a soup. Uh, do you bring them Jesus? Because there's no power to the Holy Spirit in your church to clean up at least 10 miles of your church. You realize, you know, they say, we're going to have, you know, listen, I believe a revival would be individual and family. If there was going to be that great revival, you know, the great awakings in America, do you realize the, the prohibition? You realize movie theaters shut down? They were throwing, they were taking alcohol and dumping it down the drain. They were closing movie theaters. They, they were, and the industries were threatening the preachers and trying to kill the preachers, preaching the word of God. And a man would close up his theater. He would wipe that place clean. He would clean it up. He would call for the preacher, come on in and use the seats for Jesus and preach to the people. And you're going to have a birthday for Jesus. You ain't going to have no revival. You can't have a revival when you're not doing right. And I was wondering, well, what about Ezekiel? What about Jeremiah? And God said, I couldn't even find one. And then the Bible says about Moses, that one man he was, I will have a prophet likened unto him. Moses disobeyed God. Moses struck that rock and God told him to speak to it. Therefore have I poured out my nation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. And that's what's coming next. When you get to Nehemiah and you read how great the Babylonian army destroyed Jerusalem. Their own way. Have I recompense upon their head? You got what you deserve, Jerusalem. And I'm telling you, Germany, I'm telling you, Russia, I'm telling you, Africa, I'm telling you, America, I'm telling you, Incas, I'm telling you, Native Americas, I'm telling you, all over the world, all over ages, you're going to get what you deserve if it's not under the blood of Jesus Christ. And right now, this year, how many babies, how many children have been thrown under the elephant wheels in India? And they're starving to death. And hamburgers are walking around. Duh! We're starving. There goes a the hamburger. That's grandma. But why aren't there any revivals in church? Because you're going to have... Happy birthday, Jesus. Well, that's, we like that. Okay, you be stupid. Paul said, I would not have you be ignorant. 
Let me show you the truth. And then Paul writes to Christians as I know this verse and I understand this verse. Have I become your enemy because I've spoken the truth? It don't upset me. It, I, I weep for the people that don't want to do right. I know what's coming. But you can't say I burned down Christmas trees and I kicked down idols and all that. I don't. I just tell you the truth. You don't want to listen? It's fine. Oh, I got to pray.